Martha Mitchell was always outspoken, but then she became one of the first insiders to suggest that there were higher-ups or something else involved in that Watergate break-in. She was gaslighted by the Nixon administration to try to keep her quiet. A new film, The Martha Mitchell Effect, chronicling how she was silenced by the Nixon White House, was screened at the Meet the Press Film Festival in New York and has now been nominated for an Oscar in the short documentary category. If I have something on my mind, I'm not going out and yell it to anybody unless I believe it's what should be said. I'm convinced if it hadn't been for Martha, that it'd been the water. Joining me now is Deborah McClutchy, the co-director, and Anne Alvarez, the director and editor of this documentary, The Martha Mitchell Effect. And I have to say, you, uh, you both know this. We've talked before. I've seen it so many times now. Um, I love this movie. So congratulations to both of you. It's Being nominated for an Oscar is so cool. I mean, just being nominated. And uh, why did you want to make a documentary about Martha Mitchell? Well, when we first heard about her story, we couldn't believe that um, it actually was true. Um, and so we started digging more into the archives and realized that, uh, you know, there was a larger story here of Martha and the systematic gaslighting campaign that was launched against her by the Nixon administration. And so we forged ahead, you know, uh, the, you know, the parallels to today's political climate are so uncanny. So it was a perfect time to exhume her story. And so, Deborah, let's watch another clip involving uh, one of my friends, the late, great Helen Thomas. Martha Mitchell hit this town like a bombshell. In fact, she is getting to be known as the unguided missile. But I do say what I please. <laughs> it wasn't that the president didn't like women. He didn't like loud women. <laughs> She was the first to say Nixon should resign. This man knew what was going on. He was negligent in being president. Did you see where Martha Mitchell did? No. He called somebody. He called the New York Times. I mean, Deborah, she spoke out about everything. Uh, president Nixon said she was crazy. She was mentioned a hundred times, as you report, on the Nixon tapes. They called her crazy, drunk, sick. Uh, actually, you know, held her captive in a motel room in California so she wouldn't talk during one of the key weekends. How did this all happen? Yeah, well, Martha Mitchell was actually someone that the Nixon administration really enjoyed having in their corner in the early years. They really sort of deemed her an unofficial spokeswoman for the administration. So she was very convenient, and they were able to use her and use her popularity in a way that um, leveraged the power of the administration um, until she started speaking out against the administration, saying the Vietnam War stinks and saying things out of turn. Uh, we always say that Martha colored outside of the lines, and that made her a very inconvenient person for the administration after all. Um, she was privy to some of the dirty things happening. We don't know exactly what she knew, but she, you know, she knew things that were going on, and she was willing to speak out against, you know, the most powerful government in the world. Um, so she was incredibly brave in that sense. And as as a journalist, uh, you know, I so admire what you you all did, and you you went through those archives and you found so much material. Talk to me about the search. Yeah, I mean, it was a, uh, a wide net that we cast um, from going to the Nixon Library to sort of mining the primary sources, the newspapers, to try to figure out where Martha was, because if we knew Martha showed up at a city, that the press was inevitably there. So there was a lot of local news that we gathered. Um, we also were able to contact a journalist who did um, this sort of seminal interview of her in 1974, right before Nixon resigned, and he found... Uh, the interview in his attic. Um, so we were able to exhume it, for, show it for the first time in 50 years. Uh, Deborah, in the film, there's a scene where Martha Mitchell comes up to reporter Helen Thomas on Air Force One in that cramped press compartment in the back. It's an old 707, and asks her a question about Vietnam. Tell us what happened. Yeah, so they were on the Air Force One plane together, and 
basically the Nixon administration wasn't very friendly with the press. They weren't interested. So when the press got wind of Martha Mitchell and, you know, saw how popular she was, they they leveraged that to their advantage. So Helen Thomas asked Martha, you know, what what do you think about the miniskirts? And Martha quipped back, well, why don't you ask me something more important? Which just shows how she wanted to be treated with more respect and she wanted to have a hand in the game. Um, so she had a really interesting relationship with female reporters. They took her seriously and we owe them a debt of gratitude for actually telling Martha's story because if we didn't have them, um, on the record with Martha, then we wouldn't really know what had happened to her. So Helen Thomas was incredibly crucial in, in telling Martha's tale. They, they really, you know, they benefited from each other, I guess <laughs> I would say. Well, women reporters in those days at the White House could not cover the president as much as so-called East Wing First Lady activities and cabinet wives, and therein lies the tale. They took her seriously. Uh, she had a really sad, uh, sad Fall, and the end of the, the documentary is very sad. You'll have to see it. It's on Netflix. So uh, catch the Martha Mitchell effect. And we are going to be rooting for you on Sunday night. Gives us another excuse Thank to watch you. the Oscars. Thanks so much, Anne and Deborah. Congratulations again.